Hi and welcome to a new episode of Apex Race. In this episode we will check out this 9070 Volkswagen Karmann gear and what that is and what is behind that. We will check out the exterior, the interior and then we will go out for a quick test drive in this little sporty beetle. <laughs> The Volkswagen Carmen Bia Type 14 is a classic vehicle that elegantly fuses Italian styling with reliable German engineering. Introduced in 1955 and manufactured until 1974, this two-door sports car represents a successful collaboration between the German company Volkswagen, the Italian designer Luigi Seger of Carat Serie Gear, and the German coach builder Carmen. The inception of the Carmen Gia can be attributed to Wilhelm Carmen who aimed to produce a sporty and stylish car based on reliable Volkswagen mechanics. It was, in essence, designed to be a vehicle that would offer aesthetic appeal to consumers without straying too far from the beloved and trusted VW Beetle technical underpinnings. The resulting car, with its sleek, curvaceous lines and reliable air-cooled, rear-mounted engine shared with the VW Beetle, became not only a stylish option, but also a reliable one. Luigi Seger was instrumental in crafting the aesthetic appeal of the Carmen Ghia, managing to skillfully merge sporty elegance with the reliability of Volkswagen's mechanical design. The Type 14, named after the project type number used by Carmen, made its public debut at the 1955 Paris Auto Show and was met with widespread acclaim. It was initially offered as a coupe, with a convertible version following in 1957. Under the hood, the Carmen Ghia Type 14 was no sports car. Despite its sporty appearance, it was powered by a variety of air-cooled flat-four engines over its production run, starting with a modest 1.2 liters 30 horsepower engine. Over the years, larger, slightly more powerful engines were introduced, but the car was always more about style and enjoyable driving than outright performance. The Type 14 was a major success for Volkswagen and Carmen, with over 445,000 units produced across its near two-decade production span. It was adored for its striking design, affordability, and reliability. Although it was never a powerhouse in terms of performance, the Carmen Ghia Type 14 won hearts through its unique charm and stylish demeanor, and it remains a beloved classic among car enthusiasts today. Its legacy is seen not just in the classic car world, where it is a popular choice for restoration and customization projects, but also in its influence on automotive design in the decades that followed. In today's classic car market, the Carmen Ghia Type 14 is appreciated for its enduring style and the relative simplicity of its mechanics, thanks to the shared components with the ubiquitous Beetle. Collectors and enthusiasts cherish it for both its aesthetic appeal and the joyful driving experience it provides, ensuring its status as an iconic and celebrated piece of automotive history. Volkswagen's Carmen Ghia Type 14, heralded for its swooping contours and reliable mechanical underpinnings, isn't without its tribulations. Largely punctuated by the intrinsic challenges that accompany vehicles of such vintage, the rust, a notorious antagonist of classic cars, prominently marks its territory on the Carmen Ghia, often clandestinely corroding the body, chassis, and the critical front frame head, thereby silently compromising structural integrity. It's not just the palpable that succumbs to age and wear, but the invisible too, as the electrical system, veiled within the car's aesthetic casing, gradually gives in to time. Brittle, damaged, or haphazardly modified wiring becomes a source of unpredictable electrical gremlins, interfering with lighting and other crucial functionalities. Juxtaposing its visual grace, the mechanical aspects of the Ghia, though robust, show their age with occasional stubbornness. Engine issues such as oil leaks emanating from valve covers and pushrod tubes, and suspension issues originating from worn shocks, bushings, and linkages, Narrate tales of the miles traversed. The brake systems, vital yet vulnerable, may demand meticulous attention or even upgrades, while the interior spaces, once vibrant and welcoming, now perhaps wear the patina of time with worn seats, faded carpets, and tired dashboards. 
Each component, from perished weather seals letting in the uninvited weather elements to hard to source specific parts, adds a chapter to the Carmen Gia's ongoing story. And beneath the surface of its vintage charm lies a stark reminder of its era, a conspicuous absence of the modern safety interventions we've grown accustomed to, such as airbags and crumple zones. Yet, despite these adversities, enthusiasts of the Carmen Bia Type 14 embrace its idiosyncrasies, finding joy in its restoration and preservation, ensuring that its aesthetic and historical significance continue to be celebrated across generations of motor enthusiasts. In every creak of its aging frame, in every patinated surface, there lies a rich tapestry of history, stories, and an enduring love for classic automotive elegance. So this episode is a special one. My mom had her 60th birthday and this is one of her like dream cars. And I thought as a nice gift, I will take her for a spin with that car. Uh, I was looking, researching where I can find this particular car and I found a website called Auto Chrome. Private persons can put their private cars onto the, onto the market and then private people as me um, can rent the car and they are specialized in classic cars so if you would like to drive a classic car even test drive or a special occasion then check out their website i will uh, link them in the description and uh, i highly recommend that of course my mom had a lot of fun uh, unfortunately we didn't record her reaction i was a little bit uh, too too early there but the reaction was great and we had a great day with the car to be very honest and and very clear we have just a vw beetle in a nicer dress let's put it that way so all the technical stuff all the like the engine suspension all the things are actually vw beetle and just like the body the, the, the carrossery is like from a chassis builder called carman and they collaborated somehow with the W. So this is like this badge additionally to, to the Volkswagen badge like Carman Gear. And um, there were two types. This is like the smaller one, the type 14, and there was like a bigger one, the type 34. So I think in, in the 70s, VW thought, okay, it's easier uh, if we buy them and then made everything in-house, uh, like in-house. So um, yeah, then the Carman Gear badge disappeared and then it was only Volkswagen, but of course they continued to make bodies for Volkswagen. From the outer design, the car looks great. It's like very sporty and uh, very roundish. I like this roundish designs, especially like in the fenders. Then we have like the nose and the lights in the fenders were sticking out and the pointy nose. And um, I don't know, but that car is a looking for me like from the body design i don't know who was like first and uh <laughs> no offense and i know enthusiasts will will kill me then, right now then but i think like the car remembers me of like three particular cars especially like with the fenders it looks for me a little bit like a mercedes benz 190 sl and then we have like this fender hood line in, in that particular um, section and then we have also like this line is continuing into the door so in the half of the door so that looks like a little bit for me like a Jaguar XK 120 140 and then we have like um, the line like a second line is beginning down below here and it's going back there in the rear arches and then also like a, a, a fin tail a little bit like here and that looks a little bit for me like a 
Borgwart Isabella or like um, the Wartburgs, a little bit like the first Wartburgs which appeared. So I don't know who made the design first up, but a, uh, what do you think? Let me know into the comments what do you think about the shapes and what do you think which car was uh, first and which design. In the front, I mean, yeah, I said uh, VW Beetle, so we don't have an engine into the front, the engine is back. So we have a little bit of storage department with like this edge here, the pointy nose, and then we have some yeah, air inlets. Uh, to be honest, I have no idea for what the air inlets are. So um, I doubt that is like for the brakes. So if somebody knows that, please let me know for what are the air inlets here but besides that we have like a very nice chrome bumper shiny one the lights here and overall i think like with the stick is sticky nose and the roundish design really nice overall design back then i think in the 50s 60s gas comes here in <laughs> super simple super simple look at that just like uh yeah turning that no no security nothing you can get from outside there and pull in some gas so what is a little bit like outstanding as i said like for carman a chassis builder and why vw didn't make that at in house maybe you know there was like this expertise of chassis building i know like Fisher Fisher was like for Chevrolet GM and Fisher bodies or like Pullman stuff like that and um, maybe because you know the expertise is in-house and when you're looking at the parts the body parts which have been done from like one piece and this is like we are talking about the fender actually is going the whole front is like it looks like one piece only like here the bonnet for the storage department is like a separate piece but besides that like the a pillar the roof and then it goes like down to all the back part so it looks really like the the car is just made of one piece like opening parts like doors or hoods or like uh, trunks that are movable part but besides that everything is just like one piece and i think um, for the whole alignment and all the stuff which are like fitting you need a super highly precision parts otherwise it will not really fit or it will not feel very well so uh, maybe that was the reason vw was not doing that uh, in-house at the first place the tail part of the uh, Carman Gear Type 14, we have like in the hip, this hip line is like a getting a little bit like wider from the chassis. We have wonderful this line here and then it goes like to the fin tail here. Not of course as big as like the US cars, but we, we, we see that there is like really a thing you can, you can see where like the lights are, indicators, tail lights, and then also like this yeah, line is going from the doors here a little bit wider very very nice where i have a little bit of problems is like the roof line and then it's going like uh, flat and then a little bit like deeper there i think personally i would like it more when the roof would be a little bit longer and then going steeper like a hatchback into the um, engine part but yeah uh, you know tastes are different that would be like maybe my idea I would like to see some concepts but uh, overall very very classic nice coupe design of the Carman Gear Type 14. So here in the back we have of course here our engine some grill here because actually uh, it needs fresh air which is coming from here and uh, of course it produces heat the heat has to go out overall very very nice design and uh, i like really the uh, the pipes here the exhaust pipes uh, that remembers me of a volkswagen beetle where i i saw that as a kid and i really really was falling in love with the sound of the boxer engine when it's idling i think it's uh, one of the greatest sounds um, ever so 
Maybe there will be like a Volkswagen Beetle in the garage soon <laughs> or a Carman Gear. <laughs> so let's check out the front storage department. We have like a second storage department, but later to that. And the storage department for the front, you have to open at the passenger side. There's like a down under the glove box. There's like a hinge. You have to pull it and with like this cables, you can open the front trunk and yeah of course we have some springs there and uh, yeah i see like washer fluid but besides that there is a little bit i would say uh, not too great suitcase could fit it foot in it or maybe a bag and then we i would say this is um the front part is like for a spare tire but of course you can uh, put any anything in it when the spare tire is gone. Maybe I will see the inlet. Oh, actually, the grill inlets are not shining through here. Yeah. yeah. And you see, this is the problem with the So let's check out what is below the bonnet of the Carman Gear. And to open the bonnet, you have to open the driver's door and down below there is like a puller you have to pull. But actually it's not working every time in this car. You have, to, oh yeah, now it's worked, okay. So we have like this VW classic boxer engine and uh, they of course increased the displacement a little bit. Now 1970 we have a 1.6 liter engine which is producing around 50 horsepower something like that. Very torquey motor but of course we are talking like about a small engine with a four speed so I think uh, top speed is like 140 or so and uh, about acceleration times I think we don't want to talk but uh, we will of course go for the test drive and I think the best the best part of the engine is the sound of course we will do a sound check and uh, yeah let's check out the interior of the Karman Gear Type 14. So welcome into the cabin of the Carman Gear Type 14 and I have to say uh, you are sitting quite low in the car and then in the seat I don't know they have been uh, for sure like the outer skin is new but I am not sure if it changed like the springs or like the cushion because you really like sitting hard firm and uh, you're like really falling down and um yeah getting outside is actually not so difficult as getting in but when you're once in then it's it's very okay and it's very very simple inside here we have i mean we have like this door card and you maybe hear that like the springs everything is like working very raw let's put it that way we have like this uh, we have like of course manual windows mirror adjusting is like happening with your hand here and then uh, you need to reach out to the driver uh, to the passenger side and um, adjust it that and then like lean backward and adjust it and lean backward so it's a little bit um, of work then we have like the door opener and then like closing putting that in and then we have like some storage department here very like uh, just the back half of the back just putting in something into the car uh, um, door cart we have like the steer two spoke steering wheel with a um, horn which sounds a little bit like a truck ah yeah you, you hear something but not really yeah hmm. maybe broke doesn't matter then we have like the hazard lights hazard lights then the um lights yeah and then we have like uh, wipers cigarettes of course back in the days we have the ashtray and then cigarettes and then 
actually that's it really we have of course a radio and the heating the heating is very nice we have like two pullers here from the driver and the passenger and actually the heating is produced by the engine and the air are in the rockers the warm air is getting from the through the rockers to the inside and then you are like pulling that and opening the flaps behind that for the heat so this is the heat system and uh, yeah some openings ventilation openings are uh, maybe maybe for that are the in the grill in the in the pointy nose that are the two flaps here you can maybe open and close that for some ventilation from the front but besides that that's really really it of course we have like a speedometer which is uh, of course driven by a cable so below 40 it, it jumps around you see that you will see that in a pov video and the tank gauge the gas gauge is also like going up and there and wherever the clock is unfortunately not working anymore the radio i don't know if it's the original radio maybe from the 70s like an original blaupunkt radio the ashtray and then we have like this glove box which is of course also really really tiny and like from materials this is very interesting this is metal the dashboard is off out of metal so no plastic nothing like that it's really really metal and then we have like a nice lever stitching which i think it's not original of course it was like repolstered that and then some stitches here that's very very nice of course like i think that is also new made we don't have any sun visors only like the rear mirror and then we have like a very very small dimmy light here um yeah and actually that's really it really there's no and i mean this is like fun because uh you have like all the modern cars with a lot of technology displays everywhere and here we have really really basic stuff and it's about like driving the driving experience um i would not go for a long trip with that car but like for a weekend trip it's really really cool you can of course adjust the seats a little bit back and forth and we have also in the in the back part we have some i would say child seats something like that and then uh there is a, a surprise there and uh, let's i will i will do the fun i will go to the back seats now <laughs> so we have to pull this little thing here the car is going this way and i mean yeah 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 so <laughs> yeah that will not really work out for a long trip uh, even for a short trip it's really no it's not it's not for adults i mean yeah yeah um no 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 but there is something something funny inside here and i will show you that this is actually um, a hidden hidden storage department back there we have like in the front the thing and then if we pull that there is like between the engine and the rear passengers there is some additional storage department you can put in i would say two bags in the front you have like um yeah spare tires maintenance your tools and in the in the back part you have your luggage for a journey so that is working so talking about journey a journey speaking about that i would say let's go for a spin and first of all let's let's do a sound check uh, with the 1.6 liter four cylinder boxer engine
the boxer engine is rumbling we are sitting inside so let's buckle up <laughs> the buckles are also very funny safety first of course also in the 70s where we have like this three point um, belts already very spartanic inside here we are like having the driving pleasure and uh, yeah there are there are some things which are a little bit uncommon of course the shifting is strange a little bit because it's it's not like an age pattern it's like the first the you have like the first the second and then you have like a bar or a horizontal line and then it looks like a little bit for me it, it drops a little bit and goes further and then you have like third and fourth so you cannot move horizontally like from one two horizontally three four you have like one two back there then a drop and then it goes i don't know that's like my feeling of like the shifting i'm not sure and then the second thing which is quite annoying is like the position of the pedals uh, gas pedal no problem um, brake also no problem but the clutch you have like the the first thing is like um, it moves a little bit and then it falls down and you have really really to get used to that because it's 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 strange also like the the gas pedal is way lower than like the braking pedal and you have really to move your feet or like you have to really find a very comfortable position so um e-brake down uh, and then first gear in of course the second uh, like the reverse you have to pull something up and then find where the reverse is so yeah you have to really um find that so first gear letting the clutch down and you really okay where's this clutch points and it, it's really hard because the pedal is like dropping it's really hard to find the exact position where you know the clutch is like tight and you get like the movement and um yeah but i think it's it's just a matter of time i'm driving that car like for 50 kilometers more maybe you have to get used to it let's let's see if the horn is working Beep. ah yeah the horn is working as like a tractor horn so i would say uh, let's go <laughs> and second so what can i say I mean we don't have like any power steering and of course like there is a way of play in the steering I guess it's, it's just like in this particular car something is like not really 100% uh, correct is like that if you are braking I will do that now it's like pulling to the left so I don't know maybe something is not really really perfect we have like disc brakes in the front so something is um, yeah not really working so well there and uh, I have to say you know we have like 50 let's let's say 50 50 horsepower and uh, I would say this is enough this is enough for like traffic yeah uh, I yeah I hit the second gear I, I thought I, I I was not hitting it uh, so as I said like for 50 50 horsepower is it's okay I was driving like cars with like 75 and like you know the difference is not so big but what is really really scary a little bit are the brakes are the brakes I, I, I don't think we have like a brake booster here so it's like really um, yeah you have to put your foot really down into the brake pedal otherwise you will not stop and um, you know all with the with the modern cars and, and traffic uh, that can be a little bit scary so yeah so we have like power is okay brakes are awful 
steering is uh, super unprecise <laughs> and you know this is like the sporty beetle <laughs> so i don't know and it's super stiff i don't know if that is like like that okay we are driving now 50 second gear 70 and it's getting super loud um and not not very pleasant i would say yeah so you hear the boxer engine and it's getting noisy and it, it doesn't feel so so well so nice um breaking down a uh, second yeah and and corners i don't know i don't know i i don't feel any suspension at all um but if you would like to see more pov driven action without any talking i will uh, put the link into the description or in the info box you can see driving me that beast uh, pov uh, also a little bit faster uh, maybe also top speed we will see I, i'm a little bit scared because oh yeah we're going down the hill and I'm, I'm really in, deep into the metal with braking, but nothing is happening. This is like, wow. Maybe you're asking, okay, is it, is it hard to maneuver uh, when like parking the thing? Uh, and it's actually not because the, the whole weight is like uh, behind us and the front is very, very light. I, th I think the whole car is around like 800 kilos. So it's very light and uh, the steering is also super light. I, I have no problems um, of like uh, to steer the thing, yeah? Of course, like braking is a different thing. Oh, fast corner. <laughs> I mean, no side, no, no side protection, nothing. It's really fun, you know. What is the best part on that car is that other people like enjoying seeing you. I was like, uh, I was driving a little bit. We have like a very nice weather with my mom, and um, people see the car even if it's like a modern car drivers they're like finger pointing at you and saying wow or like uh, bikers were passing us and like thumbs up stuff like that and and i think this is like the fun part uh backwards yeah we can go backwards also so it's working um and i think like this is you see i i on the on the spot i have really no problems of like turning the wheel and uh, to be honest I have like a little bit pain in my arm and uh, yeah it, it, it doesn't hurt anything so it, it's really easy um, also for not so strong drivers and as I said I think this is really the nice part that uh, other people are pointing at you and waving and and giving thumbs up and and enjoying seeing the old car i was uh, staying there and the neighbor like an, an, never met that guy before but he said yeah i was uh, i was working on vw's uh, beetle and um i i don't see the car anymore and there are like memories coming up and how much fun i had with the car and i think this is beautiful a very beautiful hobby to keep alive that classic cars on the on the street having them running them not only in the garage but also like having them on the streets of course everything is rattling nothing really fits but uh this is like um yeah this is uh h yeah h and uh, of course we have some restoration here and maybe uh, people didn't fit the part so well so thanks for watching if you would like to see more older cars let me know in the comments box i, I would try with autochrome i now have like a decent source where i can check out different cars uh, that is really really cool i'm very thankful for that of course i have to pay for it but hey for you i will do that if you if you would like to see particular older cars let me know i hope you enjoyed this episode and um yeah see you in the next one have fun and Bye.